Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at Paradox Initiative. Paradox Initiative is brought to you by Elf Creek Games. It's for one to four players, ages 10 and up, and games generally run about 30 to 90 minutes. Our newest discovery changes everything. Our Paradox engine lets us manipulate Paradox particles, the fundamental building blocks of reality, past, present, and future. None are beyond our grasp, and nobody can stand in our way, except that is maybe the frauds at that rival Paradox lab down the street. In the Paradox Initiative, you are mad scientists competing to claim strands of space-time from worlds all across the multiverse. On your turn, you will select planets to focus on, then you will shift particles in order to form those strands of space-time. But be careful, every captured strand sends ripples throughout existence. These particles will allow you to capture worlds and reap their advancements. In the end, the player who has collected the most complete worlds and has best met the company's research goals will be hailed as the greatest scientist in the universe. So who of you can most efficiently operate their particle matching paradox engine and collect strands from the different worlds? Join me in the multiverse and let's find out. So this game may look familiar to you. This is a new version of Paradox Initiative. It's still a game of card drafting, uh, resource management, and set collection, but they've made several changes. We're not gonna do a deep dive into all the changes, but some of the things more notably are things like the artwork. They have a number of artists working on all these cards, just simply beautiful. And the fact that you have alliances and all the research now in the main game, it's just part of it. And you've got triggers that you can turn in for wilds now, and you have all this technology you as a player can tap into through the course of the game. And of course, you have a new solo mode and a two player mode where you increase the cards and things that you're doing in the wormhole phase of the game, which we'll get to. But there's just a lot of really interesting changes that they made as they went through the process of revamping this game. So the main board is the multiverse. There are a number of planets out here and they're all labeled with a letter. Why is that important? Because it corresponds to the cards that you're going to be acquiring. Try to get sets for past, present, and future along your timelines, getting those maximum points at the end of the game. But you have to be aware because there is a glitch in the matrix, so to say. You're moving the glitch across these worlds and they can become fractured and that will cause you to lose points, lose cards from your sets at the end of the game. Along the edge of the board, you'll find research goals. And through the course of the game, as you acquire cards, you're also trying to get these symbols to fulfill the goals that are set forth, hoping to get more points at the end of the game. In the middle of the board is the anomaly. These are particles that you place out here. These particles are gonna be used to create your time strands. We'll talk about those in a minute. And you've got wild particles that potentially you can get with the triggers on your main board. And then there are shields. Yes, shields. There are cards that are gonna call for shields in order to complete that row or column that you're trying to do in those time particles and so forth. But we'll get to all that in a minute. And it's just really an interesting aspect and how to get more points and more cards and so forth. So those are some of the main things. And then you have the cards that are going to form the draft. And this is gonna be part of the wormhole, which we'll get to. But based on player count, you'll determine how many cards are gonna be in play. Same with in your player area. You have your timeline where you'll be placing those past, present, future cards. And that timeline will shift through the course of the game. You also have your technology that you'll be tapping into into, which is a really nice aspect to this new version as well. And then most importantly, you have all the particles that you're trying to basically build those time strands out of. Now, you're building a five by five grid and you're gonna set up those particles in the bag and draw them out randomly. Each player will do this in turn to build that grid. And you're gonna build from basically the bottom up uh, and left to right. So what's interesting though is that through the course you're gonna be moving these around, you know, kind of have that bejeweled feel to it as you manipulate all these particles. So there are three main phases to every round. You have the wormhole phase, you have the matrix phase and a cleanup. Now you're gonna have a first player who is the chief scientist. And the way turns work in the wormhole phase is the chief scientist goes and it moves around the table, each player taking one action. The last player then will go again and will move back around to the chief scientist. So you only have three possible actions you can perform in this particular phase. You can draft a card and move it to your timeline. You can flip over 
or you can draw, I should say, two technology cards and choose one and keep one, flip it over and have it available to use through the course of the game. Lots of different powers giving you all kinds of abilities in this game. Really fantastic, actually. And then you can just simply flip over a trigger. Now, again, these triggers are gonna be used in order to give you a wild particle. So you need all three to be active. You'll flip it over and you can potentially use that later in the game to get one of those particles. But these cards are key. They're probably the main thing you're gonna be doing in this phase. I mean, the others are very valuable and you'll need to do that from time to time, but you're trying to get cards where you can get resources to fulfill them and then score them. Now, if you look at the cards, not all of them, but most of them are going to have a number and a color in the top left corner. That will show you what different types of particles you need to put on the card when you get them from creating time strands. And once you fulfill the needs, then you can score the card, put it into your score pile. Now there's some different types of cards here. Obviously you have the main planets, which are the letters out on the board that correspond to your cards, but you have some other cards that are named that are gonna cause you to interact with planets as well as achieve the resources it calls for. Those just means you're gonna be putting shields on planets or you're gonna cause them to be unfractured and we'll get to that in a minute. But the thing is that you also have Nexus cards. You'll see a grid that matches your grid and you'll have to put a shield out. Now, once you put a shield on that particle, it can't move or anything, which is in the next phase, but you'll need to complete a time strand using that shield in order to score that card. And then finally, you do have a wild. If you can't complete a set of cards, you do have a parallel universe card. And this just requires two of any resource plus a wild. And once you do that, then it can be used in conjunction with a past present card to complete your set. So phase two, the matrix phase is all about obtaining those resources to put on the cards that we just talked about. Now you're trying to complete a time strand and you have two actions on this particular phase to move particles around. Now you can move them around inside of your grid or reach out to the anomaly and grab one and swap. So you're always swapping. You're always swapping the same symbol in order to create a line. You're trying to create a line of the same color, four or five. A strand of five will give you two of that colored resource. A strand of four will only give you one. So you really have to decide, you have to puzzle it out where you get that, again, that bejeweled vibe here where you try to achieve those strands to fulfill the cards, the resources the cards are calling for. So once you complete that time strand, you will gather the tokens from your matrix and put them into your player area. Now again, if it's four, you get one. If it's five, you get two. And if it happens to be red, blue, or yellow, you'll get to flip over one of your triggers. Now, you have a couple options with these colored tokens. You'll be spinning them, putting them on the cards, the cards that need that resource, or you could potentially spin them to make an alliance and put a token above your board for later use. You can use it to help worlds or you could use it on a card to fulfill resources. But alliances can be stolen or removed from you, so beware of that. And then make sure that once you complete that time strand that you refill your matrix and this is key, everything in the matrix shifts down and then you refill from there, pulling randomly from the bag. And with these resources you just acquired and placed on cards, hopefully you finished off a card or two and can move it to your score pile. And when you do, those particles come off and move back to the bag and then you're going to move the glitch based on being past, present, or future will determine how far the glitch moves. Whatever planet it lands on, that planet becomes fractured. And the way to repair fractured planets is by using black or white particles. Those particles can be used to make a planet whole or to put a shield on a planet. Again, you're doing that because when you collect sets of these planets, you hope to get the maximum points. And if it is a fractured world at the end of the game, then you're gonna lose a card from your set, reducing your point value. So it is a trade-off by putting resources on cards versus saving worlds and using those different particles in different ways. Now you do have those alliances which can help you here as well, but there's a lot of choices to be made as you move through the different worlds and cards and how you best can save them. And then everything on your timeline is going to shift. So potentially if you didn't finish a card in time, it's going to fall off. 
And just a couple other things of note on this matrix phase is that this is the time you would use those technology cards. These are really powerful. Do not ignore these through the course of the game. It is a trade-off when you get them, but it is worth doing. They can allow you to manipulate your matrix or manipulate the glitch. So very powerful and very useful. Also, you can flip over your triggers if you have a full set to get one of these wild purple particles that can be used on parallel universe cards or just as a wild to fulfill a card you need to. Also, you can use your alliances to save a world, you know, make it whole or put a shield on. And that's really what you're doing in this matrix phase. And then finally, you move to the cleanup phase once everyone has done that, and you're going to be refilling the timeline cards, getting ready for that next round, and you'll just continue this way, round after round, until you run out of those timeline cards and then you'll score all your points. Again, based on sets that you've created will determine how many points you get and all the different types of research goals and things that you've acquired with those symbols in your card sets as well. And you hope to be the ultimate mad scientist. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form, so keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. And definitely keep an eye on the campaign for all the new artwork and stuff you're going to be seeing for this game. I mean, this new fresh coat of paint has made this just a beautiful, beautiful game for sure. And they've really done some nice things. And It's been a while since I played the original, but I really felt like this game was fresh and new as I played through it. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.